Hello and welcome to Man's Model Moments. Several manufacturers choose the Nuremberg Toy Fair as an event to showcase their upcoming releases for the year. That was the case for Taleri, who I covered in the video linked below last week, and it was also the case for Ravel, though they had disclosed some of their Q1 releases already. Now it's time to go through their newly released catalogue, which once again I'll put a link through to the PDF format of, so you can browse through it yourself if you wish. Now before we do go through the 2024 releases, we do need to talk about the catalogue itself. Now in many cases with Ravel, it is a case of caveat emptor, buyer beware, and the catalogue starts off in this vein by being slightly disingenuous. Firstly, there are items marked as new tools, and also items marked as having new parts, such as these. These, however, are not new releases for 2024. Grogu, for instance, was released in 2022. In fact, all of the new items in the catalogue for 2024 are marked with new. If they're not, then they're not new for 2024. But if they are, then they can also be new tools, or have new parts, otherwise they're just reissues of prior kits. Yeah, it's not exactly intuitive, is it? So armed with that knowledge, let's take a look at Ravel's 2024 catalogue releases. The first of the new tools I'll tackle is the Gloucester Meteor F3 in 132nd scale. This was slated for last year, but didn't make it, sliding into this year. We still don't have renders, pictures, or even box art for this yet, although we do have a price of about £145. Now that is high, but then we've no idea what's included. Its part count and size are about the same as the Airfix 124 Spitfire, so I think we have to wait and see whether Ravel can justify the extra £50 above that kit's price. If we're getting photo etch, canopy masks, metal undercarriage and so on for example, then maybe it is. The next kit is also a delayed one from 2023, the German Submarine Type 9C in 1.144 scale. I was looking forward to this one last year, and we did get to see sprues of this at Scale Model World in November, and it did look pretty nice. It should be available pretty soon, and I believe it's around the £25 mark, which seems pretty reasonable. Okay, so now we're on to the really new stuff for 2024, and we get the poster child for Ravel this year, gracing the front of its catalogue, and it's another Star Wars kit with the speeder bike in 1 12th scale. Now AMT Stroke Ertl did a kit of this in the rather strange 1 11th scale back in 1996, and I do have one of those, so it'll be really interesting to see how the Ravel kit compares to it. This is being released under the Mandalorian banner, rather than for the Empire Strikes Back, as the trooper has a satchel with Grogu in it, and this makes perfect sense. The main issue I see here, again, is the price, as this is a hefty £65. Now if you think £145 for a 132nd scale Meteor is high, half that for this is really going to trigger you. The most surprising new tool announcement from Ravel, I think, is the brand new F-35A in 172nd scale. As you can see from the video linked below here, I've compared all the 172nd scale F-35s available to date, so it'll be really interesting to see how this and the Atelier C model weigh into that this year. The choice of the A is a little unusual, given how recognisable the STOVL model is, and the fact that Tamiya released their F-35 last year, but we'll have to judge it when it comes. Now coming back to franchise tie-ins, Ravel's first new vehicle is the Stranger Things 1985 Chevrolet K5 Blazer in 125th scale. And this is the police cruiser that Chief Hopper drives, of course. Ravel, at least in its Ravel Carrera iteration, has been really good at getting high-profile franchises, and this is about as high-profile as it's gotten with a wide audience in recent years. The cars are a bit of an easy one for a model company, and not where I would have pitched this. I think a Demogorgon and the Demodogs would have been the things to start with, but maybe they're coming later. Sticking with vehicles and 125th scale, we then have the Corvette C8 Coupe. I'm not generally a huge fan of American vehicles, but this actually is one that does pique my interest, and might tempt me if it captures me in the right mood. Ravel have had a lot of focus on this sort of scale vehicles, especially with their ties with Monogram over the years, so continuing the trend is unsurprising. We then again have another demonstration of some innate Revel oddness though, with the next car being not in 125th scale, but 124th. This is the Lamborghini Revueto, 
an oddly named car, since this name also refers to a scrambled egg dish, making it topical to mention the chaotic scaling of Rebels vehicles. Many have tried to explain this in the past, but as Monogram tooled in both scales as well, I don't think there is an easy explanation to be had. I just wish someone at Ravel would make the executive decision and pick one and stick to it. Going away from vehicles now and into figures, we have another franchise tie-in with World of Warcraft and the Lich King in 1 16th scale. For those unfamiliar, World of Warcraft is a massive multiplayer online role-playing game, or MMORPG, released by the giant gaming corporation Blizzard Entertainment 20 years ago. Expansion packs are released every couple of years, with several announced for this year and going forward. I think this sort of release is great to see, and as nerdy hobbies like video gaming, Warhammer and modelling become more mainstream, I think it only serves to expand the frontiers of modelling further. I doubt it will appeal to the majority of older modellers, but then it's not really marketed at them. The ninth new tool is another release from World of Warcraft, this time the Orc Thrall, and also in 1 16th scale. I'd prefer the former model over this one, but Orcs have wide appeal amongst gamers, so I imagine this might be the more popular model of the two. If they're successful, there's obviously also massive scope for other characters from this huge universe. The last two new tools are both easy click kits, and both aimed at beginner modellers from another two very different potential markets. The first of these is the Fent 728 Vario Tractor, which I imagine might have a wider general appeal amongst existing modellers, as well as being accessible for younger modellers who like tractors, and many young girls and boys do. It's definitely not for me, but it's a good and welcome move as far as I can see. The last new tool is an easy click figure, once again in 1 16th scale, that I am confident the majority of my subscriber base will be completely unfamiliar with, Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto is the titular character from a manga and anime series that started at the end of the 20th century and has spread from Japan since then. I think this is another smart move from Ravel, since this sort of subject is rare in the modelling community in the West, and it will undoubtedly appeal to an as yet untapped niche outside of Japan. We start off the kits with new parts with a typically historical Ravel kit, the E3A Century, which was last issued in 2002, and is actually a 1980 conversion to the AWACS aircraft from their absolutely ancient 1957 tool of the KC-135 Stratotanker, which is actually in 1 to 1 3 ninth scale. Go figure. Continuing with the Stranger Things franchise we had from Hopper's truck in the new tools, we have the 22nd release of the 1982 tooled VW Camper in the guise of Surfer Boy's bus. This vehicle is a firm favourite of Ravel's, so again this makes complete sense here in this Netflix tie-in. Billy's 1979 Camaro is coincidentally based on the old monogram tooling from 1979 itself, which does add a certain air of authenticity to it. Both Monogram and Ravel have released this kit in various guises since then, but I think that the Monogram 1980 release of the Street Stalker is probably closest to this release. Interestingly, it's been stated as 124 scale in prior notifications, as was the Monogram original, but in the catalogue it's down as 125th scale. I think Ravel just play fast and loose with this to suit their needs at the time. Now Ravel do have an original tool of the 1970 Shelby Mustang GT500 in 125th, dating from 1980, which has seen a lot of releases and added parts to it over the past four decades, and I expect it's this kit, rather than a conversion of the newer 2023 351 tooling, but we'll have to see when it's released. Lastly, we have the Leopard 2 A7, which I presume is an update to the 2011 tool of the A6 version, which has also been released as the Swedish Stridsvagen 122. The A7 is one of the latest versions to be in active service, with only the A7 Plus and A8 versions, which are currently being produced, being more modern. Starting in a galaxy far, far away, we have the re-release of Ravel's Pod Racer in the rather bizarre 131st scale. This was a new tooled easy kit in 2012, but it hasn't been reissued since. Ravel's association with Bandai has been running for a few years now, and doesn't show any signs of stopping, which I think is a good thing given how generally hard to obtain Bandai kits can be in Europe. The Advanced TIE Fighter, first seen in Darth Vader's control, was tooled by Bandai in 2014, and one thing I really welcome about these releases is that they're in a consistent scale, unlike so many other Star Wars releases. As if just to demonstrate that point on scale, 
You then have a gift set of Darth Maul's Infiltrator in 1 120th scale. This was an easy toolkit in 2012, and again, we've not seen it released since that time. Almost celebrating 50 years itself, this F-16 Falcon in 132nd scale is a 1979 original tooling that's been added to over its 45 year history, this time as this 50th anniversary celebration offering. Sticking with big scale aircraft, but shifting to helicopters, we have the 132nd scale Alouette II from 1996, and this will only be its fourth release in that time. Tooled in 2012, and last released six years ago as the Mark VIII, this time we have the Westland Lynx in a special paint job, which I expect is in the form of one of Ravel's huge special decal sheets. In 2009, Ravel resurrected this old 1986 monogram 148 scale tooling with some new decals, and it looks like they're doing the same here with another franchise release, this time as part of the Red Bull Flying Bulls that you're going to see several times in the next few kits. Even older than the Cobra is this Corsair, another 148th monogram tool, but this time from 1963. It's had some new parts along the way, but there are much better kits of this aircraft in 148 scale, to me as being the most obvious. Another flying bull, another kit older than me. This is the 1964 monogram tool this time. We finish with the flying bulls editions of old monogram kits with the 1977 tooling of the B25H Mitchell. I'm not sure why anyone thought these were a particularly good idea, but none of these are very unique subjects, and the choice to use such old tooling seems baffling. This is a really interesting release, since the only kit of the DO-335 in this scale is from Tamiya. I don't think I've seen Ravel box a Tamiya kit before, which makes me wonder how this came about. Tamiya have a great name and presence globally, so why use Ravel as an outlet? It makes sense for smaller companies like ICM or companies with a heavy East Asia presence like Bandai, but Tamiya? I wonder also if this is a one-off or a sign of things to come. Moving to 172nd scale for the first of three World War II Luftwaffe entries, which I am looking forward to. The first of these is the Arado AR555, which is a very welcome return for a kit first tooled in 1998 and only released once more since in 2012. This Luftwaffe 46 design was from Ravel when they were at the top of their game around the turn of the millennium, and it's one of a few of these kits that are great to see again. The second of these millennial kits is the 2002 tooled mighty Blomenvoss BV222 flying boat. This is an absolute monster of an aircraft, and one that is extremely impressive in 172nd scale. It's a great kit, and the pricing looks set to normalise the second hand market, so another great entry. The last of these entries is the Arado AR240, a plane so advanced in concept and design that the technology of the time really couldn't realise it properly, and it never made it into mainstream production. It's an interesting and unusual looking aircraft, and well worth a look if you've never tried one, despite being the earliest of these three kits, first tooled in 1994. Next we have another ancient monogram kit, the 1968 B-52. Again, this has had different parts added to it during the years to represent more modern iterations of the aircraft itself, and this time we're getting the Platinum Edition, which typically means photo etch and new decals, and maybe some other doodads, but this is still only representing the D version, despite the fact that the H first entered service in 1961. This is the 2022 ICM tooling of the Sally, being opened to Ravel as several of their other kits have been in the past few years, both aircraft and vehicles, and it seems this trend is continuing, as it's not the last time we'll see them here in this video. If you want to see what this kit looks like, check out my In the Skies of China video linked below. I expect this to be a combo of two of the 1998 original tools of this aircraft, and though it's a little disappointing that the 50th anniversary wasn't marked by a new tooling, at least Ravel has done something for it. The last time Ravel released a 172nd scale Lynx was in 1992, with some new parts added to the old 1974 Matchbox kit. This time it appears we're getting a simple reboxing of that last release. Moving to small scale aircraft, we have another Iron Maiden spin off with the re release of the 2016 1 144 scale Ed Force One, itself being derived from the original 1993 tool. 
Next, we have a very brightly liveried version of the original Airbus A321-200 tooling from 1999, certainly something a bit unusual for the civilian airline modeler. Another two commercial Airbuses join the ranks, the first of these being the A340 in new Lufthansa livery, this kit first being available in 1992 and last released in 2007. The other German airliner here is the A330, this one being a 1993 tooling last seen just over a decade ago in 2013. The last airliner here is the BAE 146, originally released as the Avro RJ88 in 1997 and last released by Ravel in 2009. This is a dual kit set of the recent 2014 tool of the A400M Atlas transport aircraft and the Tornado IDS, originally toured in 2006. First toured in 2010, this Eurofighter Typhoon makes a return after a break of almost a decade in a new special RAF scheme. Now I really feel for tall ship modellers when they see another release of an ancient kit of the same old subjects. I get that sailing ships may be a niche market, but it's hardly surprising when the offerings are always 50 or 60 year old toolings like this HMS Beagle in 196 scale which dates back to 1961, and I can't imagine it's very appealing. If you wanted to build this kit, chances are I imagine you already have. A more modern subject, a much more modern tooling, we have the Platinum edition of the 172nd scale Type 9 U-boat, first issued in 2013. I'm guessing this may be to capture interest from those wanting more extensive and challenging build of the subject after cutting their teeth on the new 1144 scale version. The KFK in 1144 scale is an unusual subject, and it's no surprise that given ICM released this kit last year, then this one is that exact same kit. It also makes sense for Ravel, as it's a German subject, so this may well be a canny move from both companies. Issued only once as a new tool back in 2007, I am sure there are some ship modellers who missed the Schmidt Houston tugboat back then who will be looking forward to this one, despite the odd scale of 1200. Another 1200 scale kit another slightly unusual subject, and another kit unreleased since its introduction as a new tool in 2011, the Herman Marvedi. As for the Smith Houston, I imagine there will be many naval modellers thanking Ravel for this one. We have to go back to 1977 for this kit, which has seen a lot of releases, this being the battleship Gneis Now. I think the 1 1200 scale is too small to truly get an impression of the subject, and its age will mean it'll look chunky and toy-like in its finer elements, but if you can't find a cheap one at a model show, you can now get one direct from Ravel. Originally released as the King George V in 1977, and this is another pointless release from my perspective, for the reasons I gave for the Gneisen now, but if it really is your thing, then here it is. Believe it or not, 1977 was the first year that this kit was also released by Ravel, but it was not a new tool even back then. In fact, this was an even older 1971 Casadio kit, and given that these were called miniships, I wonder if that's where Ravel picked up the line name for its other 1200 scale releases that followed. Another 1977 1200 scale ship? this time packaged with the much larger and much newer 2010-1700 scale kit. To be honest, I think I'd just get the 1700 scale kit and not bother with this set because I don't think the 1200th kit is adding any value here. Next we have another set of 1700 scale ships this time entitled Pacific Warriors, but due to the grainy image from the online PDF and my lack of ship identification expertise, I couldn't say what these two are. They look like they might be a dual light cruiser or destroyer set, but I don't know which of Ravel's limited range in this area they might be. Let me know in the comments if you can identify them. Moving on to more solid footing now, we turn to vehicles, and we start with the 112th scale 69 Chevy Camaro. This is a massive model, originally a 1988 monogram kit, but released just over a decade ago by Ravel as the Z28 version. This appears to be just a simple reboxing of the earlier monogram kit. This is an original 1990 tooling that Ravel has released 14 times in the intervening 34 years, almost once every two years. 
This release is on time since the last boxing of this was in 2022, and this is what they call the exclusive edition of the Trabant, including a book. Other iterations of this exclusive edition type of kit have been very expensive, so we'll have to see what the price of these eventually turns to be to see whether it's really worth it. Now celebrating 50 years of a slightly more glamorous vehicle, the Porsche 911 G model is only a few years old, being first released as a new tool in 2021 and still being present on model shop shelves. Another iconic anniversary, this time 60 years of the Ford Mustang. This kit in 124 scale traces its origins back to Monogram in 1995, and variations of this kit have been released under that label as recently as last year. Now for those of you who aren't German, or aren't in the European heating business, Valiant is a German heating company established in 1874, and this Volkswagen T1 bus, originally tooled in 2008, celebrates that, which is obviously targeted for a very specific market. The same 2008 kit also makes another appearance here, this time in the distinctive golf colours, which I don't believe it's been offered in before, and should have a much wider audience than the prior release. This is another tooling from the 1990s, hailing from 1992 and not having been released for the last three decades. Now it's not exactly the most handsome of supercars, with its headlights giving it an impression of its eyes being too close together, but it's still a car that I'm sure many will look forward to being able to purchase again. The large 124 scale Schlingmann TLF fire engine was a new tool in 2007, but was last released in 2011, so again, I'm sure there are many that are looking fondly at the opportunity to pick this kit up at a reasonable price. The Kuntach is part of my childhood. It was one of the posters I had on my bedroom wall, and was a real symbol of the 1980s. It is perhaps fitting then that this kit dates back to 1988 itself, being another monogram original tool, though Ravel released it in 2012. We then have four kits that we have no imagery for in the catalogue, these being the 124th Jeep CJ7, originally a 1977 monogram tooling, the 1957 Chevy Bel Air two-door sedan, again in 125th scale, based on a 1962 monogram base tool, the 1977 Chevy Street pickup, which is listed as 125th scale in the catalogue, but as 124th scale on the Ravel website, and based on the 1978 monogram kit, and then finally, the 68 Firebird, which is actually a Ravel tooling from 2001, but again in 125th scale. To say the water couldn't be muddier with these scales would be an understatement. Getting to the slightly simpler world of 135th scale military vehicles, we start with the BM1316, which is a 2020 ICM tool based on their 2019 British WOT truck kit. Next we have a native Ravel tooling from 2009 that I completely missed at the time as I was indisposed having a family, the Rakaten Jagdpanzer Jaguar 1. This is an interesting looking vehicle which was only released once, and I think I'll pick up one of these since it has a very World War II look to it, but of course it is in fairly modern Bundeswehr colours, which is an unusual combination. The last in 135th scale is the Type 320 Cabriolet which some of you will recognise as the ICM release from last year, which is exactly what it is, the Cabriolet version of their earlier 2016 base 320 saloon staff car. Jumping down to 172nd scale, we then have the 2004 Sparwagen Fennec, which hasn't graced store shelves for 20 years, and it's a nice looking little vehicle and kit that I'm sure many will look to pick up. Another similarly aged kit that hasn't seen a release since the original tooling is the T-72 M1 from 2006. Given the continuing war in Ukraine, I can see a few of these being picked up and converted into diorama pieces. Last released a decade ago from another early 2000s tooling, this time 2005, the Nashorn will get a welcome return this year, since this is another of those really nice Ravel toolings from that time, and well worth getting if you've never tried one. Last in the 172nd reissues is the gift set Conflict of Nations, featuring the 1997 Tiger I and 2002 T3485, the latter last released by Academy in 2022. 
Finishing off the military vehicles then is the 176 scale Jagdpanzer IV L70, which is the old 1978 Matchbox kit. The Jagdpanzer is okay, I wouldn't say it's one of the best of Matchbox's outputs, and it certainly looks very dated next to the 172nd scale vehicles we've just seen. For the right price this will be welcome, but Ravel do have a nasty habit of overinflating the price it asks for these old Matchbox kits. To round off the last of our 57 reissues, we have a 187th scale Express Locomotive S3-6, which was an original tooling made in conjunction with Seji in 1984, and was last released 25 years ago at the tail end of the 20th century. So once again, I imagine this is going to please a lot of railway modellers that have been scouring the second hand market for one of these. Well, in total, this was quite a lot from Ravel. 11 new tools is by far the most of any of the big manufacturers. Five new kits with new parts and 57 reissues makes for a total of 73 releases for 2024. Since I don't double count any of the starter sets, gift set and model set versions of these releases as separate releases, just as I haven't for any of the other manufacturers. What's more impressive, I think, even more than the Italieri releases last week, is the breadth of types, subjects, periods and scales that Ravel have covered here. They've got figures, spaceships, naval vessels, military vehicles, trains, cars, military and civilian aircraft. They've also accommodated different genres, from anime to gaming and TV shows and box office blockbuster films. No other company has really managed to capture popular franchises and present them, often in an easy to complete form for the novice, to their prospective audience. Tying in with popular franchises like Stranger Things was common from the 70s to the 80s, but died off after that and I think it's great that Ravel are bringing back that tradition, especially as parents become increasingly keen to have their children adopt physical activities to supplement their screen time. Making models for anime and video games may not be what some modelers want, but thank god the decision is not up to them, because without appealing to younger modelers, the hobby wouldn't have a long-term future. I also think variety is the spice of life, so go on and get a Lich King and broaden your modelling outlook. But, and yes, here comes the caveat. <laughs> in the main, this is still a very traditional release, in the way that Italieri's was. Ravel are making subjects that might appeal to younger modellers, but as far as I can see, they are not engaging younger modellers on their turf in the way that Airfix have been trying to do. Social media is so pervasive and has been around for so long now that we have a whole generation who have grown up always having access to a screen and the internet. They don't look at catalogues, probably even websites, so whilst having some of these models is great, I imagine the majority of younger potential modelers won't be exposed to them. Outside of that, Ravel still demonstrates why it has developed that caveat emptor tagline associated with its name. Some of the reissues and kits with new parts are absolutely ancient, and quite terrible toolings at that, that unaware modelers are going to be very disappointed with especially if they've done other modern kits from Ravel or other manufacturers. Others are reboxed ICM kits or Tamiya kits that are going to give anyone unfamiliar with the Ravel brand an overblown idea of what they make, whilst there are also a solid chunk of decent kits from their past that many modellers will be really pleased to see again. I said it with Italieri's release, and I've said it many times before about Ravel, including in this video, linked down below, but traditional model companies like Ravel and Italieri need to follow Airfix's example and show some genuine clarity and honesty about exactly what they're releasing and what new means when they introduce something because I definitely don't think it means a kit old enough to collect its pension. So this is a very Ravel type of catalogue for 2024 and its new releases. On the one hand, they've got some great new toolings of some really interesting subjects with an appeal that goes beyond sort of traditional World War II aviation or military modelling. On the other hand, they're releasing a mixed bag of goods in shiny new boxes 
which feels a bit like a lucky dip or like you're a contestant in Container Wars. Will what's in the box be worth what you paid for it? So, as with 99% of anything with a Ravel logo, the phrase is, again, caveat emptor, buyer beware. Do your research, double-check with scalemates, and then decide if you want to buy it. That seems like a cynical and sad thing to end on, with what is otherwise a very encouraging release. But that's down to Ravel and their rather sad and cynical business approach. If they clean up their act and start printing tooling dates or the provenance of all their models, then I'd be the first to praise them for it. In fact, overall, Ravel seems to have this Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde feeling about them. On the one hand, they're appealing to a much broader audience with their offerings than most other companies. But they're offering them in a very old-fashioned way. They're great to do business with as a retailer, but not quite so nice to deal with as a consumer being that they'll sell you shiny new things and old crap in the same boxes and not tell you which is which. They always seem to have a good side and then a side that lets them down. Still, even with all of that, this is an encouraging release from Ravel. As others have said, they're investing, which hasn't always been the case through their troubled history, and that is a positive thing. We're getting some interesting new tools. We're getting some really nice reissues too, it's just a shame that you have to invest so much time researching to walk through that minefield to be able to dodge the money traps and avoid the duds. Now before I go, let me share what I already have shared with my channel members and Patreons. I had this box of ICM goodness arrive yesterday, so make sure you're subscribed with that notification bell set to all to see what it contains in some unboxing reviews and more coming soon. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more like it, and share this video with others you think would also enjoy it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and if you're feeling generous, then I also have a Patreon, which is absolutely the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like this. With that, I hope you have plenty of modeling moments of your own, and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video.